Hallelujah. All right, so last week we started a message on Passover, specifically on the timeline of Passover and Yahshua's memorial. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do a little recap. So, last week, okay, last, last week, we started our narrative off counting down the week prior to the Day of Unleavened Bread. We started off six days prior to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you know. This last week, up until the Passion of Messiah, can be followed from this six days all the way up until his resurrection. Amen? And so, this is what we've been doing. Following the path scripturally and seeing what this timeline looks like. You know, um, scripturally that is. Alright, so, six days out. Six days from unleavened bread. Now, an important point to note is that in ancient times when they when they spoke of the Passover, they were referring to unleavened bread. You know, and we read this even in scripture, you know, where they speak of the Passover and it tells us that, you know, that they were actually speaking of unleavened bread. They used to call the Passover unleavened bread. Now that's an important point. Now six days out we have Mary who anoints Yahshua with, with oil upon his feet and then begins to wash his feet with her hair. Now, this event is very popular and everyone has heard of the story, but sometimes they may not realize that this has actually occurred on the ninth, six days prior to unleavened bread, the ninth of a bee. Okay, and then we had the triumphal entry. And the triumphal entry, it occurred on the 10th of a week. And then we had the turning over of the tables and whipping, the whipping of those who was carrying things through the temple, you know, um, because they were doing it on Shabbat. You know, and so if someone asks you, what would Yahshua do? Remind them that turning over tables and breaking out whips is a possibility. You know, people seem to forget about that. You know, now, this incident actually occurred on the Sabbath, which was the 11th of a B. You know, and then we spoke about the 12th. And on the 12th of a bee, a woman anointed Yahshua's head with oil. You know, and so there was an anointing of his head with oil, and this transpired on the 12th of a bee. And so today we're going to talk about the 13th of a bee. Very interesting. You know. All right, so let me have my first reader read Yochanan, chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, please. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Yahushua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Yeshua, Yahushua, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he has come from Elohim, 
and went to Elohim. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Yahushua answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Hallelujah. Okay, so in Yochanan 13, 1 through 5, we're told, now, it was this was before the Feast of Passover, amen? You know, and now, uh, as I mentioned previously, when they spoke of the Passover, they actually meant what we refer to as unleavened bread. Now, it says the supper being ended, the devil having put in the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, he rises from supper. You know, and this is the very same day that Yahshua began to wash his disciples' feet, that he washed their feet. Now, Yogana 13.26, you know, told us, to whom I shall give a sop when I dipped it, you know, and he gave it to Judas Iscariot. Now, hereby we learn that Apostle John's account places the night of the Last Supper and foot washing before the Passover, that is, prior to unleavened bread. You know, now, this is John's account. Now, Matthew's account says, in Matthew Yahoo 26, 17, it says, Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yahushua, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare thee to eat the Passover? Now, on the surface, it sounds like this was actually beef is that this was actually uh, during unleavened bread, the first day of unleavened bread, you know. But we know first of all that it, that it couldn't have been, you know, uh, for reasons that that becomes apparent as you continue to read, you know. But when we look at this word, the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, you know, no way they're keeping. The first, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they haven't even had Passover yet. So, we know that that's not uh, supposed to be taken at face value. This word first is protos, number 4413 in, in the Greek, you know, and in your Strong's. And it can mean foremost, before, or beginning. Well, the only one that makes sense is before. You know, so, actually, this is saying, now, before the feast of unleavened bread. The disciples came to Yahushua were saying, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? You know, it couldn't have been the first day of unleavened bread because Passover been over with and they wouldn't be talking about where we're gonna eat the Passover. You know? So it has to be speaking about before it happened. You know, so that's the one, the only one that fits out of the definitions of protos. Now, with that in mind, consider Mark. Account. Mark's account is found in chapter 14, verses 12 and 13, speaking of the same day, same time. And it says, in the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall ye meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. And again, this word, First, translated as first, is protos. And again, it means before the day of unleavened bread. Now, Luke's account is found in chapter 22, verses 7 through 9. It says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Now, again, you cannot take these things face value because the day of unleavened bread, the Passover would already be over. So it can't be speaking, you know, um, at face value. Verse 8 goes on to say, And he sent Peter and Yochanan, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? Okay, now, 
Luke 22, 7 is translated, then came. An alter alternate translation of Luke 22, 7 could and, and possibly should, in, in my opinion, read, moreover, coming was the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And when you take this into conjunction, you'll see that in each account of this day, it is prior to the Passover. If the truth is as the interpreters has made it to sound, and even in, in some of the Bibles, you know, actually many of them, you'll have you, are the ones who give like the big, dark, bold, uh, um, uh, what are they, some surmises or, you know, some uh, summaries where they kind of, kind of, uh, surmise what the paragraph is going to be about. Many of them say that this is the time of the Passover. But it is not. You know, if the truth is as the interpreters have made it to sound, then what happened to a B-13? Why do we have an account of every day leading up to Passover except the 13th? If this day was Passover, then the question becomes, was the Last Supper the Passover? You know, and many people believe that the Last Supper was Passover. So it's a legitimate question. Was the Last Supper Passover? Well, I think not. And here's why. We're missing day 13. How are you just going to jump from day 12 to day 14? Where's day 13? So, let's go back to the beginning. We're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to get a clue. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let me have my next reader read Exodus 12. That's back in the beginning because never forget, Passover is a memorial of what happened with Moshe in Israel. And we keep a memorial of even as uh, during the Yahshua's time, they kept a memorial of what Moshe and what happened with Moshe and Israel. We today keep a memorial not only of what happened with Moshe and Israel in bringing them out of Mitzrayim, but we keep a memorial of what happened to our Messiah Yahshua and how he led Israel out of spiritual Mitzrayim. Amen. All right, let me have my next reader read Exodus twelve six through eight. Ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood, and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast it with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so we see, first and foremost, that Passover is not on the 13th of a beat, right? right? It's on the 14th. You know, and we also learn in verse 8, it says that it's the, Israel is to eat the flesh in that night with unleavened bread. Can you see that? So, they're to eat the Passover in that night of the 14th with unleavened bread. Now, let's go back to that day in question. Matthew Yahoo 26, 21 through 23, it says, And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly, exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Adonai, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dip of his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Yochanan 13, 6 I'm sorry, Yochanan 13, 26 is, is Yochanan's account. So that was Matthew's account. Now we're going to look at Yochanan or John's account. It says, Yahushua answered, He it is to whom I shall give sop when I have dipped it. And when he said so, I'm sorry, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Okay, and then we have Mark's account. Mark's account is found in chapter 14, verse 20. And it reads, and he answered and said unto them, 
It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. All right. Now, the point I'm trying to make with these passages is that they were dipping or sopping their bread that night. And ye don't dip or sop with unleavened bread. But if it was Passover, they would have had to have unleavened bread. So the fact that they're, they're dipping and sopping the bread tells us that it wasn't Passover. Because if it was, then they would have been breaking Exodus 12, 8. Now, consider Luke twenty two nineteen, because I know, you know, I know I, I have some some stiff neck folk up in here, and they not gonna be settled with that in and of itself. That's all right. I got something for you. Luke twenty two nineteen. It tells us about the bread they were using. It says, and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Mark's account is found in 14.22. It reads, And as they did eat, Yahushua took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Matthew's account is found in 26.26. Chapter 26, verse 26. And it reads, And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now you can see in each one of these accounts, bread is number 740. Amen? Now when we look up bread, number 740 in, in the Strong's Concordance, we get that it is from arrow, number 142, meaning to lift. It speaks to bread as raised. So this is lifted or raised bread. This is not unleavened bread. This is raised bread. You don't get bread to rise without leaven. Amen? Amen. Now, unleavened bread is azumos, number 106 in the Greek. You know, and it speaks to unleavened bread. Okay? So, that there's no, make no mistake about it. They weren't using unleavened bread. They were using our toast, raised bread, leavened bread, that is. Exodus 12, 8 taught us that ye shall eat unleavened bread during the Passover, not leavened bread. So how were Yahushua and his disciples keeping Passover with our toast, that is with raised bread and without azumos, that is unleavened bread? If this was truly Passover, then they would have been in violation of Exodus 12, 8 and Exodus 12, 18. Because Exodus 12, 18 and 12, 8 says it must be eaten with unleavened bread. Amen? Amen. Let me have my next reader read Exodus 12, 21 and 22, please. Then Moshe called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Okay, so here it is. We see another command concerning um, Passover. And it says, None of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning, right? Well, let's see about this particular night in question. Yohanan 18.1 It says, when Yahushua has spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered in his disciples. Well, it don't look like he stayed in the house. Don't look like he stayed in to me. Well, let's take a look at another account. You know, surely Luke will show differently, right? Luke 22, 39 says, And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. What? Again, he left out. 
Well, that's against Torah. That's against Exodus 12, 22. If this was Passover. What about Mark's account? Mark's. In 1432 says, and they came to a place which is which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I shall pray. That's Mark's account. And then finally Matthew's account is found in Matthew Yahoo 2636. It says, Then come of Yahushua with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and say unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. There aren't many things all four gospels agree upon. <laughs> But here's another. That is that Yahushua and his disciples left the night of the Last Supper, which would have been in violation of Exodus 12, 22, if this was Passover. I know we leave out of here when we keep the Passover and we go home when we keep it, but we're not under the curse of the law. But they were, and if they would have got caught out, it could have been detrimental for them. And surely would have, because, you know, they was looking to get something more. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Yah was without sin. Yah sure was without sin, so this couldn't be Passover. It just simply couldn't be. But wait! There's more. <laughs> Matthew Yahoo 27, 1 says, When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Yahushua and put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Right? Okay, so that's Matthew Yahoo. You know, this is the next day, right? Now, Mark 15, 1 gives us his, his account of the next day. It says, and straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Yahushua and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Luke's account found in 2266. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into the, their council saying, and then um, verse 1, uh, Luke 23, 1, and that was the end of the chapter. And it says, then the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And then finally, Yochanan, um, John's, his account found in chapter 18 verses 28 and 29 says, Then led that Yahushua from Caiaphas, Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled. Why? But that they might eat the Passover. So this is the next day and they talking about eating the Passover. Well, that was the Passover. He wouldn't be talking about eating the Passover. Now would he? And verse 29 says, Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? If the night of the Last Supper was in fact Passover, then this, then this, um, this is the account of the next day. It would have been the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That is the high day. But it isn't. Because we know they're still talking about Passover and they're working. Somebody bound him. Somebody took him over to the judgment hall. Amen? So, it couldn't have been Passover. Now I want you to think about this. If none of the Passover lamb were to remain until the morning, then why is Yahushua the Passover lamb roaming about the next day in violation of Exodus 12? 10? Exodus 12, 10 tells us, and ye shall not let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remain of it in the morning, ye shall burn with fire. They didn't burn Yahshua with fire. Because this was not the day of the Passover. You know, that said, it's also a violation of Exodus 12, 46. Not to mention, the priests themselves would have been sinning. Exodus 12, 46 says, In one house shall it be eaten, thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bond thereof. So you see, none of the Passover lamb, uh, so you see, none of the Passover lamb was to leave from the house in which it was eaten. 
Mm-hmm. Not to mention that the next day after Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, i.e. the high day. That is the very day that they agreed not to kill them on. So now you want to say that that was Passover, then they will be killing them on unleavened bread. Matthew Yahoo 26, 4 and 5 says, And consulted that they might take Yahushua with subtlety and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Besides, you can't kill the Passover on unleavened bread. For the death angel would have already come. Hence the people would have been in an uproar. So if the night Yahushua instituted his covenant and he washed his disciples' feet, if it wasn't Passover, what was it? It was the missing day 13. That's what it was. It was day 13. It's been found. And so, you know, so many people go around preaching and teaching and saying that this was the Passover. That the Last Supper was the Passover and it was not. That is very unscriptural to say. So, Eight, um, the 13th of a B, the time of foot washing has been found. So we can check it off our calendar. So we went from the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, and we found them all in Scripture. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That's all I have for you today. Pray was a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen.